break their fetters, come the last cast of their yoke. He who sits in the heavens laughs, the Lord is laughing them to scorn. Then he will speak in his anger, his rage will strike them in terror. It is I am set on my king, on Zion, my holy mountain. I will announce the decree of the Lord. The Lord said to me, You are my son. It is I who have begotten you this day. As an I shall be through the nations, put the ends of the earth in your possession. Bitter out of the fire you will break them. Shatter them like a potter's jar. Now, O King, understand. Take warning, rulers of the earth. Serve the Lord with all, and trembling pay him homage. Lest he be angry and he perish, for suddenly his anger will blaze. Glory to the Father and to the Son. Blessed are they who put their trust in God. Glory to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. They divided my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You are far from my plea and the cry of my distress. Oh my God, I call by day and give no reply. I call by night and I find no peace. Yet you, O God, are holy, and thrown on the praises of Israel. In you our fathers put their trust. They trusted and you set them free. When they cried to you, they escaped. In you they trusted and never in vain. But I am a worm and no man, scorned by men, despised by the people. All who see me to ride me, they curl their lips, toss their heads. They trusted in the Lord, let him save him. Let him release him if he sees his friend. Yes. yes, it was you who took me from the womb and trusted me to my mother's breast. To you I was committed from my birth. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not leave me alone in my distress. Come close, there is none else to help. Many demons have surrounded me, fierce bulls of passion close me in. Against me they open wide their jaws, like lions trembling and roaring. Like water I am poured out, disjointed are all my bones. My heart has become like wax, it is melted within my breast. Heart has burned in my throat. My tongue cleaves to my jaws. Many dogs have surrounded me. A band of the wicked beset me. They eat their nose in my hand and my feet and lay me in the dust of death. I can count every one of my bones. These people stare at me and gloat. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. O oh Lord, do not leave me alone. My strength, make haste to help me. Rescue my soul from the sword, my life from the grip of the stars. Save my life from the jaws of these lions, my poor soul from the horns of these oxen. I will serve your name to my brethren and my grace where they are assembled. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, the beginning is now, and will, will be forever. Amen. They sought to take my life back by violence. O oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Through your anger, all my body is sick. Through my sin, there is no help in my limbs. My guilt towers higher than my head. It is so way too heavy to bear. My wounds are full and festering, the result of my own folly. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. All my frame burns with fever. All my body is sick. Spend the natural rush. I cry the Lord in the anguish of heart. O oh Lord, you know all my longing. My groans are not hidden from you. My heart drops, my strength is spent. The very light has gone from my eyes. My friends avoid me like a leper. Those closest to me stand afar off. Those who plot against my life lay snares. Those who seek my ruin speak of harm. Planning treachery all the day long. But I am like a deaf who cannot hear, like a dumb unable to speak. I am like a man who hears nothing, in whose mouth is no defense. I come to you, O Lord, it is you, Lord God, who will answer. I pray, do not let them mock me, those who triumph if my foot should slip. For I am at the point of falling, and my pain is always before me. I confess that I am guilty, and my sin fills me with dismay. My wants and enemies are numberless, and my lying foes are many. They repay me evil for good, and attack me for seeking what is right. O oh Lord, do not forsake me. My God, do not stay afar off. Make haste and come to my help. O oh Lord, my God, my Savior. Glory to the Father and the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. They brought false evidence against me. They were breathing out fury. From the letter to the Hebrews. When Christ came as high priest of the good things which have come to be, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation. He entered not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood and achieved eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heaver's asses can sanctify those who are defiled, so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself up and blemished to God, cleanse our consciences from that works to worship the living God? This is why he is mediator of a new covenant, since his death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions committed under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. 
Where there is a testament, it is necessary that the death of the testator be confirmed. For a testament comes into force only in the case of death. It has no force while the testator is alive. Hence, not even the first covenant was inaugurated without blood. When Moses had read all the commandments of the law to the people, he took the blood of goats and calves together with water and crimson wool and hyssop and sprinkled the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the covenant which God has enjoined upon you. He also sprinkled the tabernacle and all the vessels of worship with blood. According to the law, almost everything is purified by blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. It was necessary that the copies of the heavenly models be purified in this way, but the heavenly realities themselves called for better sacrifices. For Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a mere copy of the true one. He entered heaven itself that he might appear before God now on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself there again and again, as the high priest enters year after year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that were so, he would have had to suffer death over and over from the creation of the world. But now he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sins once for all by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that men die once, and after that be judged. So Christ was offered up once to take away the sins of many. He will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. Given up to death to give his people life, he surrendered himself to death and was counted among to be killed to give his people life. From the Catechesis by Saint John Chrysostom, Bishop. If we wish to understand the power of Christ's blood, we should go back to the ancient account of its prefiguration in Egypt. Sacrifice a lamb without blemish, commanded Moses, and sprinkle its blood on your doors. If we were to ask him what he meant, and how the blood of an irrational beast could possibly save men endowed with reason, his answer would be that the saving power lies not in the blood itself, but in the fact that it is a sign of the Lord's blood. In those days, when the destroying angel saw the blood on the doors, he did not dare to enter. So how much less will the devil approach now when he sees not that figurative blood on the doors, but the true blood on the lips of believers? the doors of the temple of Christ. If you desire further proof of the power of this blood, remember where it came from, how it ran down from the cross, flowing from the Master's side. The Gospel records that when Christ was dead, but still hung on the cross, a soldier came and pierced his side with a lance and immediately there pour out water and blood. Now the water was a symbol of baptism and the blood of the Holy Eucharist. The soldier pierced the Lord's side. He breached the wall of the sacred temple, and I have found the treasure and made it my own. 
so also with the Lamb. The Jews sacrificed the victim, and I have been saved by it. There flowed from his side water and blood. Beloved, do not pass over this mystery without thought. It has yet another hidden meaning, which I will explain to you. I said that water and blood symbolized baptism and the Holy Eucharist. From these two sacraments, the Church is born. From baptism, the cleansing water that gives rebirth and renewal through the Holy Spirit and from the Holy Eucharist. Since the symbols of baptism and the Eucharist flowed from his side, it was from his side that Christ fashioned the church as he had fashioned Eve from the side of Adam. Moses gave a hint of this when he tells the story of the first man and makes him exclaim, Bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. As God then took a rib from Adam's side to fashion a woman, so Christ has given us blood and water from his side to fashion the church. God took the rib when Adam was in deep sleep, and in the same way, Christ gave us the blood and the water after his own death. Do you understand then how Christ has united his bride to himself and what food he gives us all to eat? By one and the same food, we are both brought into being and nourished. As a woman nourishes her child with her own blood and milk, so does Christ unceasingly nourish with his own blood those to whom he himself has given life. The price of your redemption was not something of living value like gold or silver, but the costly shedding of the blood of Christ, the Lamb without blemish. Through Him, in the one Spirit, we can approach the Father. The blood of Jesus Christ washes away all our sins. Through Him and the one Spirit, we can approach the Father.
do not punish me. God did not spare his own son, but gave but him, gave up, him to up to suffer for, for our sake. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blood of my offense. Oh, wash me more and more from my guilt. And cleanse me from my sin. My offenses truly I know them, my sin is always before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned, what is evil in your sight I have done. That you may be justified when you give sentence, and be without reproach when you judge. O oh, seeing guilt I was born, a sinner was I conceived. Indeed you love truth in the heart, then in the secret of my heart teach me wisdom. O oh, purify me, then I shall be clean, O oh, wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Make me hear rejoicing and gladness, that the bones of Christ may revive. From my sins turn away your face, and blot out all my guilt. Of your heart create for me, O God, put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not, Do not cast me away from your presence, nor do deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help, with a spirit of your heart sustain me, that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. Rescue me, me, God, my helper, and in my tongue shall ring out your goodness. O Lord, open my lips, and in my mouth shall they hear your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight, burnt offering from me you would my sacrifice of contrite spirit, a humble contrite heart you will not spurn. In your goodness show favor to Zion, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, all of us offered on your altar. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. Jesus Christ loved us, and pour out his own blood for us to wash away our sins. O oh Lord, I have heard your renown, and feared, O oh Lord, your work. In the course of the years, revive it. In the course of the years, make it known. In your wrath, remember compassion. That God comes from Taman, the Holy One from Taman. Cover the heavens with His glory, and with His grace the earth is filled. His splendor spreads like the light, 
grace shine forth from beside him. Where his power is concealed, you come forth to save your people, to save your anointed one. You tread the sea with your seeds, I am the churning of the deep waters. I hear and my body trembles at the sound my lips quiver. My bones, my legs tremble beneath me. I will take up this curse that will come upon the people who attack us. Although the fig tree blossom not, nor fruit be on the vines, though the yield of the olive fail. And the tarps that produce no nourishment. Though the flocks of sheep appear on the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet will I rejoice in the Lord and exult in my saving God. God, my Lord, is my strength. He makes my feet slip as those who rise, and enables me to go up on the heights. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. your cross, O Lord, and we praise and glorify your holy resurrection. For the wood of the cross has brought joy to the world. Oh, praise the Lord, Jerusalem, Zion. Strengthen the bars of your gates. He has blessed the children within you. He establishes peace on your borders. He fills you with finest wheat. He sends out his word to the earth and simply runs his command. He showers down snow white as wool. He scatters or frosts like ashes. He hurls down his stones like crumbs. The waters are frozen at his touch. He sends forth his word and it melts him. And at the breath of his mouth the waters flow. He makes his word known to Jacob. To his rose his loss and decrease. He is not the thus with other nations. He is not taught them his decrees. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. From the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be raised high and greatly exalted. Even as many were amazed at him, so merit was his look beyond that of man, and his appearance beyond that of mortals. So shall he startle many nations. Because of him, kings shall stand speechless. 
For those who have not been told shall see, those who have not heard shall ponder it. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of all that he would save us from our enemies. From the hands of all who hate us, he promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. We to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous in His sight, all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare His way, to give His people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. We shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Over his head they hung their accusation, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews, For our sake, our Redeemer suffered death and was buried and rose again. With heartfelt love, let us adore him and pray. Lord, Lord have, have mercy on us. us. Christ, our teacher, for our sake, you're obedient even to accepting death. Teach us to obey the Father's will in all things, we pray. Lord, Lord have, have mercy on us. Christ, our life, by your death on the cross, you destroyed the power of evil and death. May we die with you, to rise with you in glory. We pray. Lord, Lord have mercy on us. Christ our King, you became an outcast among us, a worm and no man. Teach us the humility by which you saved the world. We pray. Lord, Lord have mercy on us. us. Christ, our salvation, you gave yourself up to death out of love for us. Help us to show your love to one another, we pray. Lord, have mercy on us. For our Pope, the College of Bishops, parents, relatives, benefactors, and for all of those for whom we promise to pray, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For vocations and for the needs of the province, 
and for our brothers in ministry at St. John Lateran and St. Albert the Great. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions of the devotees and pilgrims of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag and for our personal intentions. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Christ, our Savior, on the cross you embrace all time with your outstretched arms. Unite God's scattered children in your kingdom of salvation. We pray. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy on us. Let us now pray in the words that our Lord himself has taught us. Our Father, who art in, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Father, look with love upon your people, the love which our Lord Jesus Christ showed us when he delivered himself to evil men and suffered the agony of the cross, for he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. The Almighty God bless you, Father and, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.